Hey everyone, Ms. Dietrich here. We're going to take a look at what we have in our balance to write an equation. On the left tray, we have two of these things, which we're going to call n. Two of the green bars will be equal to n. And then we have two of these, which we'll call plus 2. Positive 2, we're using yellow to rep represent positive. Equals, and if we count what we have over here, we have a negative 10. Red represents negative. All right, so we basically have a two-step equation. 2 times some number plus 2 will equal a negative 10. In previous lessons, we talked about how you might take things off of trays to keep it balanced. If we took these two yellow things off, we don't have two yellow things to take off on this side, so that poses a problem. What we're going to use instead is we're going to use the idea of inverse operations. In class, we've talked about what's the opposite of a positive or add 2, and the opposite of that would be a negative 2. Whatever we do to this tray, if we model that, let's drag a negative 2 over here, we have to do the same thing to this tray. So let's drag a negative 2 over here and make sure that we put that underneath on this side to keep it balanced. Now if we go ahead and think about what cancels out, this cancels out. We call this a zero pair. That cancels out. Here's another zero pair. That cancels out. So basically this whole thing is gone. It's canceled out. We're still left with the 2n, so let's copy that. 2n equals and now let's look at what we have over here in this tray. If we count up all the red squares, we have 12 red squares. A negative 10 combined with a negative 2 is a negative 12. All right, so this basically means 2n, or 2 times some number, equals negative 12. That means we need to take what we have here and put them in two groups. So if we call this one of the groups right here, and, oops, my pen's a little bit messed up there. And this the other group. We just have to count how many are in each group. And if we count how many are in each group, one, two, three, four, five, six of the negative um, chips, or what we call tiles, algebra tiles. So if we have six in there, we're really dividing both sides of the equation by two. This cancels out. Two divided by two is one. One times n is n. And then we did a negative 12 divided by two, and we got a negative six. And that this answer is supported by our picture. Now if we had to do a check, let's take a look at what the check would look like. We would rewrite the equation, which was 2n plus 2 equals negative 10. We would rewrite the equation, but instead of putting the letter n, we're gonna, we will put our solution that we got for n, which recall was negative 6. And now we're going to follow order of operations to go ahead and make sure that the two sides of the equation match. In other words, they should be equal to each other. If we do this times this, we get a negative 12 plus 2. And we're checking to make sure that that equals a negative 10. And if we do a negative 12 and a positive 2, that does equal negative 10. Negative 10 equals negative 10 and it checks. All right, so to review what we did in this case to get the variable isolated and to get this side to cancel out is we added to both sides of the equation. We took this negative 2 and put it on both sides. So we basically combined a negative 2 in with the positive 2 to get that to cancel out. We combined these two things that got the negative 12, and that brought us to a more simple equation to solve. Two-step equation, we got a negative 6.